Hello there. This is Apostle L.A. Anderson of the Old Campground International Ministry Incorporated. We are now worldwide in the country of Pakistan, in the country of India, in the country of the Philippines, in the country of the continent of Africa, and in Bermuda and throughout the United States. And I'm inviting you to call a friend or neighbor and tell them that Apostle L.A. Anderson is now on the air. And we are here to tell you who is in your pulpit. Yes, I need you to call a friend or a neighbor and tell them to join us on our YouTube channel or Facebook Live. And we will read for you the Word of God from Genesis to Revelations and teach you what God said about the wolf, the dog, and the pig. This is Apostle Ellie Anderson and I'm saying to you, come and go with me and you will be blessed. There's going to be a meeting. meeting Come on. Old-fashioned oh, meeting. Meeting tonight. Meeting on the old. Meeting the old. Hand down. There's going to be a meeting. Meeting tonight. People are going to get together and have a good time. Hello there. This is Apostle L.A. Anderson of the Old Campground International Ministry Incorporated here in Chicago, Illinois. Today I want to come back to you with the theme, Who is in your pulpit? Listen, my beloved and my friend, I want you to understand that whoever is ministering to you is also ministering the things either of God or the things of the devil. And you need to know the word of God for yourself, that Christ is the solid rock, and he has established the church upon himself, not upon men, not upon women, not upon fame, not upon fortune, but upon the word of God. Today, I want to ask you the question, do you know who is in your pulpit and do you know that what they are presenting is the absolute word of the living God I want to read to you today from the Apostle Paul's book 1 Corinthians chapter 10 because it gives us historical background of what the children of Israel did and did not do and how they were deceived by the hand of the enemy and many of them were destroyed. Today I'm concerned, I have a heavy heart because I'm looking at the word of God and the men and women who say they are with God producing immorality and sexual contacts and dealing with things that are not in the word of God. Listen, my friend, your contacts, the old folk used to say birds of a feather flock together. That may be an old antidote, but it is still true. Whoever your contacts are, those are the ones who are going to either build you up or let you down. I believe Proverbs says it this way, iron sharpens iron. And so in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we see the historical account of the children of Israel going through the wilderness and allowing the spirit of Jesus Christ, who is the rock, to follow them. The first verse says, moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Verse number five. But with most of them, God was not pleased for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. 
Verse number six. Now these became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Verse number seven, and do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Verse number eight, nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Verse number nine, nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and was destroyed by serpents. Verse number 10, nor complain as some of them also complain and was destroyed by the destroyer. Verse number 11, now all of these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our ammunition upon whom the end of the ages have come. Verse number 12, therefore let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he fall. And finally, verse number 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make your way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And the 14th verse, Paul said, therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. Since we're on the subject of who is in your pulpit, and we know today that there are wolves in the pulpit with itchy ears and in the end time trying to deceive the man and the woman of God who needs to know a word from the Lord. For the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, 3 through 4, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but out of their own lusts they shall heap to themselves teachers, having itchy ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn to fables. My beloved, today I am just in a state of panic as I look at many of the churches across the country who have men and women in the pulpit who are wolves in sheep clothing and how many thousands of people attend Sunday after Sunday and weekday after weekday to hear not a word from the word of God but a word about prosperity, a word about you moving in health, a word about you moving in finance, but not a word about you moving in the things of God. Listen, beloved, I want you to know just like the children of Israel, you must follow the commandments of God. God has not destroyed the Ten Commandments. What he's destroyed is ritual and ceremonies. And I need you to understand that the word of God is still true. The first commandment gives us the priority that sets us in our lives to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our strength and all of our soul and to give him the supremacy of our heart by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal savior and coming out of sin and moving into righteousness. The word of the Lord says, moreover, brothering, I do not want you to be unaware. And some of the scripture says, I don't want you to be ignorant that our fathers were all under the cloud and all pass through the sea. Listen, there is no temptation that has come upon us that is not common to man. And what I need you to understand is deception is in the land. You must go through your trials and your tribulations. And every day is not going to be a good day, but every day God is still in control. When I look at verse number two, it has something to say. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. In other words, Moses was the leader that God ordained. Moses was the leader that God appointed. Moses was the leader that God anointed. Moses was the leader that God set before a million point six people and said, if you follow him, you follow me. 
Listen, my friend, this is the same thing that Paul said in the New Testament. Follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, deception is in the land when you find out that the leader, instead of preaching the word of the living God, instead of living a life that is of righteous standards, when we find out that babies are being born in the church, women are being assaulted and harassed in the church, not by other men, but by the leaders that's standing in the pulpit. Listen, beloved, the Bible says, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. This is why marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. My God, today, we're looking at men who have received honors from the White House to the Black House, men who have received honors from the Pope and others, only to find out that their lives are a scattered, torn piece of trash. You need to understand now that whoever you are following, they must also be following the Lord Jesus Christ. And the example that Christ gave us was of righteousness and holiness. I don't know about you, my friend, but holiness is still right. Holiness is not a dress style, but holiness is a lifestyle. And because of holiness, we know now that our leaders, even though they fall, they must get up, repent, and turn from their wicked ways and turn back to God. Listen, beloved, when I look at the scriptures today, I clearly see wolves, who have come in sheep clothing to deceive and to bring us under doctrines of demons and seducing spirits. My friend today, all of the piercings and tattoos and all of this weird stuff that is going on in church and dancing and other situations that looks like it belong in the club is not of God. My friend today, if God gave us a word back then, his word does not change. For the Bible says, I'm the same yesterday and today and forevermore. My friend today, I need you to wake up. That's exactly what I said. I need you to wake up and get back into the word of God for yourself. I read you before from the book of Acts chapter 17, beginning with verse 11 and 12. And I'd like to do that again today. Acts 17 verse 11 said these were more fair minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preached by Paul at Berea, they came also and stirred up the crowds. Listen, my friend, when we tell the truth, there's always going to be somebody to go behind us to say it is not true. But if you study the word of God for yourself, after all, 2 Timothy 2.15 said to study the word of God for yourself so that you will not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God for yourself. Beloved, you still need a Bible. That's what I said. You still need a Bible. I know we have it on the raspberry, the strawberry, and all the other berries like blackberry, but you also need the book. For all of the blackberries, the strawberry, and the raspberries need to be charged, but the word will charge you. I need you to understand today that if you don't understand who's in your pulpit, you're going to be deceived. And in being deceived, you're going to be lost. Listen, my friend, if the preacher in the pulpit, whether it is a woman or a man, they first of all need to let you know that they're preaching the word of the living God from Genesis to Malachi from Matthew to Revelation, 
There's 66 books. You don't need to understand the lost books until you found out what the found books are dealing with in salvation and deliverance and bringing you into the order of the kingdom of the living God. Second of all, you need to know what sin is and what repentance is all about. The job of the preacher is to preach that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But thank God for Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we must come out of sin and rebellion and come into the kingdom of the living God in righteousness and true holiness. Oh, my friend, when I look around today, tears come in my eyes as I see you have honored prominent men and prominent women because they speak as the oracles of heaven. And yet they are leading you down the road of destruction. I hear the prophet Jeremiah saying, hold on to the old landmarks, those truths that we were taught by wonderful men and women of God in the past are still valid for today. Listen, my friend, you know the wolf when you see the wolf because the Bible says by their fruit, you shall know them. And I got news for you today. If they're not leading you in the path of righteousness, if they're not giving you the understanding that whatever trials and tribulations you're in, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. So whatever you're going through, It is for your maturity. It is for your growth. It is to give you to know that the spirit of God that dwells in you is able to keep you from falling. Oh, my God. When I look at verse 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm reminded again that the word of God has something very powerful to say to each one of us. No temptation has overtaken you, except such as is common to man. In other words, my fellow believer, in the past, in the present, and in the future, the devil is doing the same thing. He has not changed his tactics. The Bible says in John 10, 10, part A, the thief cometh not but to rob, to steal, and to destroy. But I love part B. But I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Now listen, my friend, the abundant life is not a house. The abundant life is not a car. The abundant life is not money in the bank. That's all a derivative of what the abundant life is when you have Christ. When you have Christ, you have everything because he's the God who created all things. My friend today, I need you to take a look at where you are attending. I need you to take a look at where you are sitting. And the Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. And if you don't hear the word of God that will convict, that will convey you to a point of repentance, if you don't hear the word of God that will stand you up in faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Oh my God, I am so weary today of people who have been fooled over and over again by words that are not in the Bible. Oh, my friend today, when I look at heretical preachers and pastors who are teaching us words that are not true, and yet you are not studying at all because every Sunday you dress up and go to the same dead church. You need to be in a church that is on fire in the Holy Ghost whose songs are sacred and whose words have meaning where the bond of God is being blessed and the people of God are losing their stress. Yes, my friend, this is Apostle L.A. Anderson from the Old Campground International Ministries Incorporated. And I'm not just talking about a local situation. I'm talking about a global situation. For you see, the word of God has blessed us now that the word of God has gone forth in Pakistan. The word of God has gone forth in India. 
The word of God has gone forth in the Philippines. The word of God has gone forth throughout the continent of Africa and in all parts of the United States. In other words, you're not listening to a novice, but you're listening to a man who has chosen to lead under the auspices of the Holy Ghost. And now, 64 years later, I still believe God. Whatever you're going through today, remember what the Bible says, all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock, capital R-O-C-K, that followed them and that rock was Christ. Listen, my friend, as I've taught in colleges, if I've taught in high schools, I've taught in elementary education, I need you to understand that the God of the old is the savior of the new. This whole thing about the Bible is about Jesus Christ and his father and the Holy Spirit that have come to bring us out of rebellion and sin and bring us back into the father's house. Don't be deceived. It's not about a house. It's not about a car. It's not about a wardrobe. It's about your soul being saved, your life being changed, your mind being renewed, your heart being refreshed, all through the word of God. And when you hear what preachers are saying today, I'm concerned because it is not what God is saying in his word. The spirit of God said that you're going to go through trials and tribulations. And here again is where we see uh, the patriarch Job. And you do realize that Job is the oldest book in the Bible. Chronologically, we began with Genesis. But theologically, we look at how the Bible was arranged and Job is the oldest book. And here we see the patriarch a man that was wealthy, a man that was what we would say today was a billionaire, and yet he honored God at every point of his life. He prayed for his sons. He prayed for his daughters. He was a man who was commercially kind to those who were around him, and yet one day he had trials and tribulations because the enemy of our soul, Satan, came to God and said, Job is honoring you because you've given him great wealth. And the Lord said, I, you can test him, but don't kill him. And the Bible says from that day to where we are now, Job immediately went into trials and tribulations until we get to Job 40 through 44 and find out that God gave him double for his trouble. Listen, my friend, if you're not going through anything, and I say this over and over until you get it, if you're not going through anything, then you don't have anything. The test of the word of God in you is to be able to stand during the times of trials and tribulations. And notice this in our book, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible says, uh, now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they have lusted. Listen, my friend, you do not have to contact the Joneses. You have to contact Christ. For he said, first seek ye the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and then all things will follow. You cannot keep up with the Joneses. You must keep up with the word of God. My friend today, this is Apostle Ellie Anderson, and I believe my assignment today from the word of God, from the kingdom of heaven, from the, oh my God, the most powerful being that the universe knows is the eternal God who is self-existent and needs nothing or no one to support him. He's trying to help us come out of deception and bring us into a place where we have peace even in the midst of our trials and tribulations. Listen, my friend, sickness will be among us as long as there's life. Death will be among us as long as there is a land. For the Bible says in the book of Corinthians that the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And I need you to understand today that you don't want to die before you meet Christ at 
Calvary. You need to confess your sins, forsake your sins, and turn from your wicked ways and turn back to God. This is Apostle Ellie Anderson. And what I'm saying to you today is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. Whatever you're going through, let prayer and let fasting be an intricate part of your life. My friend today, I pray with you and I pray for you as well as I pray for myself. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come before the throne of God today, first of all, confessing our sins and asking you to cleanse, to wash, to renew. As David said, create in me a clean heart, renew in me a right spirit. And then, Father, prepare us for the work that you've given us, that souls might be saved, lives might be changed, minds might be renewed hearts might be refreshed. In the name of Jesus, direct us as the shepherd where we should go and what we should do. And prepare us now to take off the things of the world and put on the things of God. For you said in the book of Isaiah, you've given us a garment of praise and you've given us the oil of joy. Allow that today to be our portion and we will give you glory, we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Now, my friend, I need you to understand that this is your day. This is your hour to get back to the Word of God. This is the time now you need to study this book for yourself. Don't take Apostle Anderson's word. Don't even believe what I say. I need you to research it for yourself. And as the Bereans, once you do it on a day-to-day -day basis, you will find that Jesus is the answer and his blood still works. Oh my God, if I could sing a song today, it will be on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. This is Apostle L.A. Anderson, and I'm excited about the Word of God, and I need you to get excited about the research from Genesis to Malachi, from Matthew to Revelation. And once you find out the truth, get into a Bible-believing church where the preacher is preaching the word and the gospel of Jesus Christ and bringing salvation and deliverance in your life. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that this is your day. This is Apostle Ellie Ederson, and I'm saying to you, until I see you again, in a power pack deliverance service or talk to you through YouTube or Facebook. I need you to go with God.